Hello everyone, it's Triton Brook, and we're here again with a game at 1Q. This will be the last game at 1Q. Unless I lose, then I might have to play one more game. But ideally, uh, one more game, then we'll double rank up to, to Dawn here. I am a little bit sick, so apologize for any sniffling or any other sort of stuff that ends up happening in this video. Let's get on into it and see how this goes. Oh, looks like we got a game here, and I am white, and they do want to play. So, I'm just going to do a double 4-4, four, four, and they are doing a single 3-4. Normally, they're going to do enclosed, but let's see if they approach, because they want to do something they did not want to. I'm going to play a little bit quickly, but I always think that approaching a 3-4 is bigger than approaching a 4-4, four, four, unless you take a 3-3 three, three invasion there, because uh, responding to that is usually nicer. So here... I just want to do the normal two space back off and let him decide what he wants to do in the top upper left. So for me, I don't really know the best way to handle this. If I like double approaching or I like this more, I think this is a simpler way to play. So you always want to separate. That's more important. Uh, I could try to build one side if I really want to, but I think separation is better. And here our group is a little bit weak. I think what we really want to do is we probably want to just pincer this stone and try to get a little bit more of a base for ourselves. So I'm going to do a very tight pincer, even though it doesn't seem like it's that good. Wow, they're just jumping up right away. Okay, I would say probably these three stones are potentially weaker. So I wouldn't mind trying to get a little bit stronger with them. So I'm going to attach to his stone to get a little bit of strength for myself. Now that he has extended, I am able to get a little bit of something in the corner if I really want to later. But this also means that if he pushes this direction, I should be ahead of these stones, and I should be able to make a base on the left side first. It could be good to just jump out again, though. If you're worried about this group, I say just jump out again, and then you don't have to think about it anymore. So let's just do that. Mm, it's interesting that he wants to give us more strength here, because this move, I think, is potentially bad, right? Because now we can push and push, and now we're the ones who are sort of attacking him. So I think I want to jump first, which is putting pressure on his group, before I push now. Because I want to see how he responds before I add these extra moves. Because if he pushes up, he's not really gaining too much anyway. So we're going to jump here to make him weaker. And now that we've made our group a little bit stronger, we can now push. And I think I want to push one more time, even though he may not respond. And that's kind of an interesting move. So he's trying to play something that's a little bit too far here. We have a couple options. We're not really sure the best way here, because we can double Hane. It seems entirely possible, but if he just captures this side, we're really just cutting off these two, this, this corner group from this side. So we're not really too worried about it, I think. But I think the main focus should actually be on this left side group. So I'm going to bring the focus back to this group. And I want to try and surround him. And then any move up here will be a move that's doing some damage to his approach stone. So we can play tight here and try to surround like this, which seems like it could work. I think a very easy way to make it work is to get this move first. Oh, he wants to cut right away. Wow. He's very aggressive. I think the simplest move for me to play right now is to just jump out. We want to just make ourselves strong and see how he wants to deal with this stone. Hmm. It's very interesting. So he wants to try to save everything if he can, which is entirely possible. Let's just play a little bit simple. We're going to turn here. Seeing if we can capture these stones. So we still want to focus entirely on our own group first. Oh, interesting. I definitely want to extend, regardless of if I end up killing or not. The extend is very important. Here it looks like I can turn, which is really nice. Threatening to kill these stones again. And also threatening the Hane here. I said, even if these three stones die, this seems like it's very important. Okay, so we connected. And now we want to try to make use of the liberties of this group and the liberties of this group up here, right? He has two really 
bad weaknesses, right? So if I Hane here, I'm threatening to kill these stones. If he jumps out and protects this, I'll be able to connect, threatening to kill those stones. And then he has another weak group he has to worry about. So I said, now I can just connect, threatening to kill these top stones. And there's two sorts of ways for me to play here. I don't really want to give him the tiger's mouth. He could have played that if he really wanted to. Um, that was totally up, uh, up for him to do. But now I don't really want to do that. And I want to just extend here. When he bumps, or if he just connects, I'm going to be pushing through. As you can see, this is actually a really bad shape for him. This is me breaking through his knight's move, which is often yeah, really bad. Instead of responding directly, something you could do is turn instead. That could be a good way to handle the situation. But since he did this one, it really makes you want to play another move on this side to get something here. For example, this turn here. But I don't really want to force him to go against those stones yet. I just want to come out and surround his other stones for now. I want to make sure my group is fully fine right here. It could technically be surrounded, so I want to prevent it from being surrounded before I go back to this group. Now there is some Aji with this uh, group of stones here. So you can attach and potentially live in the corner in a really easy way. I don't even need to worry about that. The other thing he could do is play this knight's move. And if I push and cut, uh, it seems like it's probably fine for me. So I could play one more move here if I really want to. Or I could uh, go back to this side, which is what I wanted to do before. If he lives in the corner, it makes it extremely difficult for him to live with uh, this group. And this move is just sort of damaging his shape a little bit, making it hard for him to make eyes really easily here. And so here, he wants to get some extra benefit. I don't really want to cut him right away. I want to make sure I'm fine first. So I will cut through here. And it's tempting to try to do some sort of Atari thing on this side. It's entirely possible that it could work. But I'm just going to go back and capture these two stones, prevent there from being any Aji here. And now he's playing a bit aggressively here. So we can cut this off if we want to. Or we can extend here. If we extend... It gets rid of him getting the possibility of, of a Hane here. Uh, but we could also just cut directly. I think cutting directly makes a lot of sense. Because my group is alive on the top. And we want to make sure his group is weak in the center. Hmm. Atariing me down. I need to extend my stone. And of course we want to extend again. And we can Hane. If we want to, looks like Hane is probably good. You see, the more he'll struggle over here, the more this group is also going to get damaged. I don't know why he wanted to do this Atari, but that should be fine. Because now we can just capture directly instead of extending. If we extend, he gets this move for free, and we don't necessarily want that. And here, we can't jump, so we can just push through and cut. So we need to do this empty triangle move. It's a little bit sad. But if he pushes again here, he's making this group a lot weaker once again. Hmm. He's trying really hard to capture me in some way, so we just want to keep him split and increase our liberties. Okay. So we have a couple options. Could Hane over the top, but I'm just going to turn here for now. So I think this increases our liberties a little bit better and it helps us connect a bit better as well. So we'll just connect up and not worry about anything, and he still has to go back into the corner to live. And he also has to go back and save his stones on the left side. All right. He went back into the corner to live. We don't really need another move over here, and we can just cut off these stones. This is already a good enough profit, and we don't need to worry about doing any attack on this group right now. I'll let him just save it, and it won't really be a big deal. Uh, here he is threatening to connect up underneath. I'm not sure which one I like more. I think I'll just bump to prevent the connection. 
needed that, which is a little bit weird, but it's it's fine. So here he has another group that is not alive that you'd probably be dealing with. And there's a couple different ways to attack this, but I think I want to take this vital point here. This is sort of like the table shape point, and we're trying to make the shape look really bad, basically. If he protects these stones, it's awkward for him. It's also awkward for him to jump out. Now that you protect these stones, we want to make sure to protect our stones again, and also use this stone a little bit more. So if we Hane here, we're also threatening this cut, or if he Hanes, there's a cut, I guess, I should say. So he can't really Hane there anymore. And we got to protect everything really nicely. So here, he's probably going to be able to live if he really wants to. For now, though, I think it would be fine for us to jump from this side. And I think it's fine to just keep jumping here to get strength here because it makes it easier for, to do anything on the bottom. I'm not sure the best way. But one way to keep him weak is to play this move. It prevents him from getting an eye there now. And strengthens our shape a little bit. Because this move here makes it a little bit harder for me to do anything with this. And then we can just jump one more time. As I said, we're not really trying to kill. We're not really trying to do anything special. We just want to make the middle turn into basically nothing. I don't know why he's doing that one. That one's a little bit weird. Looks like we can potentially peep at his shape. And let's just make him very stick-like here. We know he has one eye, potentially. And we don't need to do anything too special. This side's very strong. So we just want to push him towards that strong side now. He can connect if he really wants to. But this is going to make us a little bit stronger. And it's going to make him, his move here in the middle a little bit weird. Mm, he is peeping here to try to get something. I think that's fine. I'll just answer. I don't mind. I think he can easily connect up if he really wants to. My goal is just to get this little bit of strength. So we can push and cut and it seems possible to do something. It looks like he can live though. We have a lot of liberty problems with the cutting stone and you can often use that to try to get something extra. I'm just going to fix my cutting point and not worry about it. As you see, we've sort of naturally gotten rid of the points that were on the bottom without really having to do anything extra. And now there's also no points here really in the center of the board. The next thing we should consider is this corner. We could invade directly or we could attach. I think either one's fine. So I'll just invade directly. It's a little bit simpler to handle. This is a common Joseki here. When he does the double Hane, we can Atari. He has to connect. Then we can Hane and connect, which should be Sente. Right? And then, after he protects on the outside, we can just live with one more move here. He captures this stone. We're able to cut and fight. Ooh, he connected solidly. I'm guessing that means he doesn't want to protect. Hmm, understandable. So now there's a lot of Aji here. So the first thing I want to do, I want to try to go after this middle group a little bit here. So one of the first places he can move towards to connect is extending on this side. So I want to Hane here. That's stopping one of his escape routes. And now that that's sort of gone, we can consider trying to surround in some way. Or... I'm not sure. I'm not sure the best way. Looks like we get some forcing moves on the bottom. So maybe we can try and surround from this way. See what he does. And so we can push even more like this if we really want to. We do have to worry a little bit about wedges. We can play a little bit more simple like this if we want to. And when he jumps again, we can attach here and make a mess of the bottom side of the board. Because we have this uh, double Hane here, threatening to sort of disconnect everything. And we can just, we, we can just capture if we really want to do that. I think we can extend here. Looks possible. 
turn, turn, maybe too much. But if we extend again, looks like we can do a little bit more potentially. So let's extend one more time. Okay. If we do this one to sort of capture or to sort of make sure things are cut, looks like we can. So let's do this one first. And then we can go back here. and just capture something here on the bottom. Looks like we can just push through. Seems like it. I'm just double checking before I go. <laughs> this is all just reading right here. He can't connect underneath because I can Atari. And if he connects, I can Atari again and then Atari again from this side, right? And then Atari. So he wants to try to do something here. Looks like we can pawn A. Him separating means I get, I'm guessing he wants to attack this group in some way. Which is a good idea for him right now. Mm, I'm not exactly sure about this. Looks like we can maybe play this move here. Threatening to connect. If he invests one more move, we know he really, really wants to do this. And then we can decide if there's any sort of extra thing we can do here, right? For example, like this attachment is threatening to capture these two stones, which are very, very important stones, while also threatening this one stone. But the other thing to worry about is just our liberties here. We don't want to do too much that hurts our liberties. But in this case, it looks like we can just extend here. He pushes and cuts. Atari and Hane, it looks like we can Atari connect, and we should have more liberties, so we can extend here. Uh, we do have a little bit of a liberty annoyance here, but we're going to cut anyway. Always going that direction, which is interesting. So we do have this potential wedge here, which would potentially sacrifice a couple stones on this side. But it would also make us stronger here. So let's do the wedge. So I think making sure we're strong is a little bit more important right now. If we get to capture these stones, that would be good enough. Okay, he doesn't want us to do that. And we're connected on the bottom because we captured those. So we can do this Atari directly, or we can block. If we Atari directly, he blocks here, and we capture. We don't necessarily have two eyes. But it looks like if we do this one, we might be able to get it. I think this might be a little bit safer overall. So we can capture here directly. This guarantees us one eye right here. Uh, that move is a little bit weird because that doesn't really get rid of our eye. So I'm not exactly sure. But let's play very safe here. We just need to make a second eye. So I want to threaten to push through and cut off half of the stones, which would make us live. Mm, this move is really bad because now there is the cutting point there. But I'm not going to worry about it because we're just going to make our eye. There's no way for him to get rid of the two eyes that we now have. There's not really anything he can do at this point to live with his other group very likely. Okay, he's cutting this off. So this is the next group we want to have to think about a little bit. But let's play very, very simple here. But there's push through and cut. So let, let's just do this one here. We're threatening to capture these two stones to live. And now we're threatening to capture them again. Hmm, he jumped, which is fine. But this means we get to threaten to capture those stones again. Um, This move doesn't do anything. So we'll just play because uh, these stones are all connected, right? Capturing something, not really a big deal. It looks like we might be able to do something on the left side here. But it's probably better to not worry about it. Let's play a big move instead. Let's just play this really big endgame move. So he's bumping, which means we can extend into the corner. Normally you don't want to bump for this reason. 
So we got this really nice end game move here. And this is not Sente right now, though I could respond to get a nicer end game here. Looks like it might be fun to go back to this side now and see how he responds. Because this isn't really cutting him off completely, but I might be able to capture these two stones, depending on how he plays. Mm, he's going to Hane here to try to live directly, which I think is perfectly fine to do. This also just makes it a little bit easier for me not to have to worry about anything involving this other group. <laughs> I think I want to push here to make sure that he can't really use any shortage of liberties on my group. And I can potentially just capture these and make a, a nice profit. And then what about this left side? Is this alive? I think this is sort of a classic, a fairly classic situation. But I know he wants to sort of connect underneath with the Hane. The other group does not really even have two eyes. So we can peep in here. And then we can play this one to threaten to cut it off. And then as you can sort of see here, if I hunt in connect, it's just a bulky five and he's dead already. What happens if I extend on the other side? If he plays down to get rid of the bulky five, I can play here. And what does he do, right? Seems like it might still be dead. So it just depends on how you want to handle the situation. In this case, I think it's a little bit easier to do the Hane. I'm connecting now. Okay. I will just... Well, these stones aren't actually that important. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I'm just going to connect. <laughs> he connected there now. So we have two options with this group. I think this one's a, a nice and simple one. Where... We're threatening two eyes directly and also threatening to push through and cut. So he peeps, we just want to connect. Mm, I'm not really sure what this move is doing, but we'll just connect for now. So here, uh, maybe I'm not, I'm not even really sure what he's doing. Uh, this doesn't really make eyes, doesn't really do too much of anything. I think I will push and show him that he's cut off here. While maintaining two eyes with this group. I also had the opportunity to just connect everything together. Which we're going to do now anyway. Because he doesn't have that many liberties. And I can always live. So let's do this move for fun. So we connected here. We can always do this Atari and connect, which is threatening an eye here. And he only has a couple liberties. So it's kind of difficult for him to uh, kill my group. And now if he tries to hunt underneath, we can turn and just throw in to kill these stones. So for now, I'm not going to worry about it. I will connect here just to show that all my stones are connected. And depending on what he plays next, we can go back to normal end game. This one is fine. As I said, we can go back to normal end game now. So this is a really big move. If I, if he doesn't respond, I can throw in and do this Hane. We connected for some reason. I have more than three liberties and I have an eye. So looks like we can throw in here. This is threatening to connect up underneath, right? And so we can just connect up underneath, and this corner is dead now. My move was Sente, so I want to make sure that he knows it was Sente. Hmm. I'm going to capture here. He will respond. But as you can see, it's kind of difficult for him to do anything to capture my group. He doesn't have enough liberties on the inside, so I really don't have to worry about it still. So I'm just going to play some bigger in-game moves like this uh, extension here. And I want to capture these two stones in the center now that he's responded to that, I think. The other option is to do something with this stone, I think. 
But anything should be fine here. So I'm going to capture these stones for now. But capturing that stone is fairly large for him. So I wouldn't mind saving it. I think it doesn't matter which way I save it. I think, I think both ways end up getting me something. And doing something with this stone as well would be fine. Maybe I'll play this tiger off. Anything in the center here to sort of fix some of this shape and, and the capturing of stones. It looks like we can capture this one, which would be nice, actually. That'll help a little bit here. Uh, We'll have to connect eventually anyway, but I think I would prefer to capture versus connect right now. Let's capture. I don't know if it really matters too much, but this prevents him from getting any sort of special move here, basically. Uh, extending versus this one. It's probably not too different, so I will just connect. Should be good enough. And just connect again. Uh, we don't have to worry about anything there. There is this wedge, which is nice, but we don't need to play it. Let's save this stone now. I think either direction gets us an extra point, so I don't think it matters too much in which way we save it. So the bottom is something I'm I'm unsure of. Feels like I want to jump here, but I can't. You know what I mean? <laughs> Feels like I should just capture these stones directly to make the most Aji for this bottom area. So let's do that. Now I should be able to reduce this in some way. For example, playing this peep here at M2. That seems possible. May not be the best move, but it seems possible. I connected to save that. He probably should have played maybe the Tiger's Mouth instead. Oh, he resigned. Okay. The next move is probably just the uh, monkey jump here. I think that was a pretty good rank up game, actually. So my opponent, um, he's going to be ranking up no matter what, but he lost enough games that he wasn't going to get the double rank up before he played me. So that's why I just continued to play. Because I wouldn't want to get in the way of a double rank up. But a single rank up, it'll be fine. He'll, he can go play a couple more games and just rank up right away. He would definitely will. He was much stronger than the other opponents I've played. I think this was actually a really interesting and fun game. I hope you guys also enjoyed it. And we have finally made it to two dawn on Fox. So now we can start seeing <laughs> uh, some games where I might end up starting to struggle. <laughs> uh, I should be fine up till five dawn. But you never know. Sometimes you just have bad days. And I hope you guys enjoyed and uh, have fun.